when I first heard about Adobe Firefly, I'll be honest, I didn't care. Another art generator? Great. Add it to the pile. Midjourney, Dolly, Stable Diffusion. They were already flooding the internet with trippy dreamscapes and hyper-realistic nightmare fuel. I figured Firefly was just Adobe showing up fashionably late to a party that already peaked. But then I saw someone using it inside Photoshop, like it was built into their normal editing flow. And it wasn't just generating random blobs of art. It was editing photos, cleaning up backgrounds, replacing objects, adjusting lighting, and doing it in context like actually smart edits. That's when I realized this wasn't Adobe chasing trends. This might be Adobe changing the entire creative process. So I signed up. Zero expectations. I didn't even plan to make a video about it. I figured I'd mess around with it for 15 minutes, maybe use it once or twice, and then forget it ever existed. And that's where I got blindsided. Because the first thing I tried wasn't even that ambitious. I had a picture of an old office desk with clutter on it. Coffee cup, some wires, paper, the usual mess. I highlighted the clutter and just typed, remove distractions and make it clean. That's all. And what Firefly gave me back looked staged. In a good way, like something from a minimalist ad. The wires were gone. The background texture stayed consistent. No weird AI smudging. No blurry artifacts. And for the first time in a while, I sat there actually stunned at how normal it looked. Like I hadn't just used AI at all. It just worked. I know that doesn't sound like much, but if you've ever used AI tools that butcher shadows, warp corners, or hallucinate stuff into photos, you know how rare it is to get something that looks natural. That edit alone made me keep testing. I thought, okay, maybe this was a fluke. So next, I went weird with it. I opened an image of a guy holding a phone and typed, replace the phone screen with a glowing coupon ad in a browser. It shouldn't have worked. That's a hyper-specific made-up prompt. But somehow, Firefly understood the lighting, reflected the glow on his face, and kept the hand positioning realistic. Like the phone was actually showing that screen. That's when it hit me. This tool isn't just generating random images. It's starting to understand context. It knows what belongs and what doesn't. That's the part that shocked me. Because up until now, most of these AI tools have felt like magic tricks. Impressive at first, but flimsy when you look closer. Firefly, on the other hand, feels like Adobe weaponized all their design knowledge into something that's not just flashy, it's on the... It's functional. Now, that's not to say everything was perfect. It's still early days. There were definitely moments where I typed something and it gave me weird results. Sometimes it gets overly literal. Like when I asked for a photo of a peaceful lake with subtle mountains in the distance. And it gave me this oversaturated, painting-looking scene that felt more Bob Ross than National Geographic. But the more I tweaked the wording, the more I realized Firefly was reacting intelligently. It wasn't locked into one style. It adjusted based on how I phrased things, even small details. And that's when I realized I'd underestimated how much power Adobe packed into this thing. But maybe the craziest part, the thing I absolutely didn't expect, was that Firefly made me want to create again. I've been doing content for a long time. You hit burnout. You get tired of dragging sliders around, adjusting layers, searching for royalty-free images, trying to find that one stock photo that almost matches what you need. It becomes work. But using Firefly, dragging a box around a part of an image and typing a thought, felt like cheating. Like I was sketching with words instead of with pixels. It made design feel fast again. Fun again. And I think that's where the real impact of this tool is going to be. Not in the flashy renders, not in the viral AI art tweets. But in the quiet moments where someone like me, or you, needs something quick, clean, and halfway creative. And instead of opening five different apps and wasting two hours, you just type it and you're done. And if you're thinking, okay, this is cool, but I'm not a designer, trust me, that's exactly the point. You don't need to be. Firefly doesn't care how good you are at Photoshop. It fills in the gaps for you. It's not replacing creativity, 
It's removing the technical BS that usually gets in the way of it. But of course, that's only half the story. Because right after I got excited, I ran into a huge limitation. Something that made me question whether Adobe is actually ready for this shift, or if they're still stuck in their old ways. So here's where things got frustrating, but yeah, mas. The part I didn't expect to bother me until it did. After getting hooked on Firefly and realizing how fast it sped up my creative process, I started planning to use it more seriously. For thumbnails, content visuals, weird futuristic images, all the stuff I normally spend way too long on. But then I hit a wall. Because even though Firefly feels like a creative breakthrough, Adobe still has limits. Commercial usage isn't as open as it seems. You can use Firefly assets commercially, but there are restrictions, fine print, and edge cases that force you to second guess every export. And when you're moving fast, trying to build momentum, the last thing you want is to get slowed down by terms and conditions. Now, I respect that Adobe trained Firefly on their own stock content. That's a smart, ethical move in a messy AI world. But the price of doing it right is that it's still very controlled. If you want to use your creations in things like ads, products, or content with high visibility, you need to stop and ask, am I even allowed to? And that slows things down. It also becomes clear that Firefly, while powerful, is still more useful inside Adobe's full apps than on its own. The web version is fun, but the most impressive stuff, the seamless edits, the contextual magic, comes from using it in Photoshop or Illustrator. That means if you're brand new to Adobe Tools, there's still a learning curve. You'll get results, sure, but they might not always look polished unless you know how to clean them up. And even then, Firefly sometimes just misses. You'll ask for a simple background replacement and it'll overdo it. Or you'll try to generate something realistic and get something that looks more like concept art. It's not broken. It just takes patience and some people won't have that. But even with all of that, I kept using it. Because the truth is, Firefly isn't about making you a master designer overnight. It's about turning your ideas into something real faster than ever. It gets you past that blank canvas phase, the staring, the second guessing, the endless asset hunting, and just lets you try stuff. And that shift is powerful. It also messes with your head a little. Like, if I can describe something in a sentence and it becomes a finished image, is that my work? Or is it the AIs? It's a weird gray area, but honestly, I think that's where everything is headed. The tools won't replace creativity. They'll just remove the barriers between the idea and the execution. Adobe seems to get that. You can tell Firefly isn't just a toy to them. It's the start of something way bigger. They're baking it into all their tools. It's going to be part of video editing, docs, presentations, maybe even your browser one day. It's Adobe shifting from software you use to software that helps you think. That's why, even with the flaws, I'm still excited about it. Because Firefly made me create more, test more, finish more. And if you're a creator, marketer, or just someone trying to keep up, that edge matters. So yeah, I tried Adobe Firefly so you don't have to. And what shocked me wasn't just how well it worked, but how it changed the way I work.